And with escalating COVID cases, the call has been made for the bubble with New South Wales to pause, which is the right thing. We now know a flight to Wellington in the early hours, arriving early hours of Saturday morning, carried a passenger who later tested positive on their return to Sydney. Uh, joining us now is uh, epidemiologist Michael Baker. Michael, wow, we've been waiting for this day. It's come sadly. Um, how big could this go? What are the what are the sort of statistical chances this thing's got out? Well, Morena, well, obviously a lot of things going on at the moment with uh, suspending the, the travel with uh, New South Wales, opening the travel with um, uh, with um, Melbourne, and now, of course, uh, an infected traveller arriving on a flight, being in Wellington for a long weekend, and then going back. So obviously uh, a lot of challenges here at the moment. And uh, a big factor, as we know, is that we're now dealing with the more infectious Delta variant. Now, the Delta variant, what do we know about the Delta variant in terms of its ability to be passed on? What does it do? Well, of course, it's the same virus. It's still transmitted in the same way. It's just as much better at being transmitted, uh, roughly twice as infectious as the original Wuhan virus from a year ago. And that means that um, in a short period of time, it will infect more people in indoor environments. It just puts more pressure on contact tracing. And if it causes an outbreak, it could be a lot more explosive. OK, so this, um, this COVID passenger sits on a plane. Planes aren't big, we all know that. They're bubbles in themselves. It sits on there with dozens and dozens and dozens of other passengers. The likelihood that it's been passed on even before this person arrives in Wellington. Yeah, that's a possibility. I mean, the benefits of, uh, in terms of the flight is that everyone will have been wearing masks and that greatly reduces transmission risk. And also, uh, authorities know who else was on that flight, where they were sitting, and they can be hopefully traced very quickly and given very clear instructions. And they all know this now, that they have to be basically um, isolating at home or quarantining at home and get tested. So that, that's m really quite manageable. I think the bigger problems are what this person did while they're in Wellington. And at one extreme, they might have just visited a small family group and not been out very much. At the other extreme, they could have been to a big family wedding, for example, which is a, a high-risk event. So we just need more information on this. Well, they might have come to, for a family wedding, but we're not going to let that um, stop us from seeing Te Papa. And then we're going to head around to Oriental Base, some lovely cafes around there, and then we might go back to Te Papa because we missed the exhibition upstairs, and then head to the art gallery because that's cool too. And you know what I mean, Michael? You can go anywhere, everywhere in Wellington. There's so much to do. That's right. Yeah, so this could be a big challenge, or it will be a big challenge. OK. Um, the chances, though, of this, of this challenge, so do, are you confident we have the contact tracing in place? Are you confident that we've stuck to this? Are you confident that uh, it's, it's up to speed? Yeah, look, the contact tracing system in New Zealand is very good and also it has this ability to scale up hugely to deal with even a large outbreak. So I think that is, a, is really positive. The, the difficulty with this variant is we have not had this virus circulating in New Zealand to date um, outside MIQ facilities. So we, we don't know what it's capable of and of course it's arrived in um, a period of winter and people are indoors so there's higher risk of transmission. So there are real challenges here. And it's colder as well, of course. I don't know. I don't know what the Delta one does, but does the Delta like the cold? Because it's certainly the previous one did, did, didn't it? Well, I think it's mainly human behaviour. This, as we've learnt more about this virus, we know that most transmission is happening indoors, um, in aerosols. So that means that, that a, a single infected person can infect a whole room full of people in just a few minutes. That's how infectious it is. So it does depend very much on whether they were highly infectious and went to a large social event at the wrong time. And that is where luck comes into it. This is a major, this is a real fear, isn't it? It's I mean, the way you just put it just then, uh, if this goes really badly for us, the worst case scenario is not pretty, is it? No, and uh, I think um, this is a reminder that we need to upgrade our alert level system. And for example, in this situation, we could be looking at um, increasing the alert level in Wellington to um, you know, a, a one plus situation where people start wearing masks in a lot more indoor environments and so on. And we could take our cue. This is really what's happening in Australia at the moment. Um, they're avoiding a lockdown by just uh, implementing much wider use of masks. I mean, no one wants to go and uh, stay-at-home order, and we can avoid that sort of problem if we start recognising how this virus is transmitted, mainly indoors, mainly in aerosols. OK, so you're saying then, as of this morning, so it's quarter past, just after quarter past seven this morning, people heading to work in Wellington right now should be wearing a mask. If you're not, grab one, because that's the best way forward. 
Well, I think that's for the, the Ministry of Health to decide, but um, this is the what's happening in Australia at the moment. When they have um, a person who's been in the community with this more infectious variant, they are really encouraging people to use masks indoors. Mm. OK, uh, we appreciate um, your time on the programme this morning. Epidemiologist Michael Baker. Uh,